My name is Caitlin and I'm the Crest Product Manager at the British Science Association and with me today is my colleague Jane who is our Education Innovations Manager and we both work on the Crest Awards programme which is our flagship STEM learning scheme. Hello and thank you for joining us on this home learning webinar today. Um, if you signed in today, you're most likely a parent looking to support your child's learning while they're at home or a teacher looking for inspiring projects that you can set for your students. And no matter which category you fall into, today we're going to show you how the Crest Awards can support learning and inspire children to be engaged in their education and preparation for either higher education or work, no matter where they are. To show you the benefits of our Crest scheme, we're going to walk you through one of our Crest projects. The Crest is a nationally recognised award scheme um, for uh, project work linked to science, technology, engineering and maths. It's aimed at ages 5 to 19 um, and uh, all the activities and resources that you need to take part are available um, for free to download on the Crest Awards website. So Crest um, puts young people in the position or role of scientists, um, a researcher or an engineer, um, allowing them to design and run their own project um, linked to science. It develops their skills, so particularly problem solving, communication, um, independent learning um, and reflective learning um, to reflect on their experiences. And this not only builds their skills, but also um, their knowledge and confidence um, in science. Quest is particularly appropriate for home learning. It's a very flexible scheme, um, which means that whether you're a teacher um, who's setting projects for students to do at home, um, or you're a parent um, who wants to support your child um, doing an extra project alongside their, their home learning set by their school, or during the summer holidays, um, Quest is a great opportunity um, to develop uh, their, their interest in science because they were to follow um, a project which they're interested in um, as well as their subject knowledge and their skills around science. Now today we're going to focus on secondary level um, but Crest is for 5 to 19 so if you want to look at a different age range um, and how Crest can be used um, then do ask questions during the webinar or email us um, and we'll respond to those. Uh, the process is the same for the other levels um, so the, the principles are the same um, and you'll be able to adapt those um, for the, the age range that you're using it with. That's right. So at secondary level, we have three different levels. We have bronze, which provides an introduction to STEM project work for 11 year olds and older. Um, then we have the silver award, which provides a challenge for 14 year olds and older um, by running their own STEM projects in teams or individually. And then we have gold, which is aimed at students 16 years and older. Um, and that challenges them to a long term open ended project that is ideal for enhancing UCAS applications. Um, so all of these levels allow young people to use their own ideas, their own creativity to tackle a problem or question connected to science in the real world. Um, the projects are anywhere from 10 to 70 hours long um, and provide a real structure and outcome to the learning process. Young people are able to look at topics that really interest them, making it entirely personal while being guided through the project by the Crestable process. So using our bank of resources or using their own uh, topic idea, children can complete their own scientific research project from hypothesis to design to implementation and then reporting. Um, and the results can take many forms, anything from models to written or drawn reports or even audiovisual presentations. Um, and these projects will be assessed against the award criteria to provide a real analysis of their work and silver and gold levels uh, even get externally assessed which really lends it credibility with many colleges universities organizations and companies so jane uh, what's your favorite resource from the crest awards library well if you're going to do crest at home then actually a really great resource to use is the make your own fizzy drinks resource um, it's a really fun activity to do um, and uh, lots of young people like fizzy drinks so you can try and recreate your favourite one at home. Um, it helps young people learn about um, the chemistry of fermentation, um, about product development, about the health um, implications of fizzy drinks um, and the uh, ingredients related to that um, and uh, it's, it's just a great fun project to do. So you, you don't need much, so all the, the equipment and um, ingredients that you need you should be able to um, get from home already or from a local supermarket um, and it's really easy to facilitate. So as a parent or teacher facilitating the project um, your role is to um, support the young person through their project 
by asking them questions to guide them um, and help keep it on track. Um, so maybe helping them think about the um, plan that they're going to do um, and, and what steps they're going to take. You don't need any knowledge about making fizzy drinks yourself um, because that's for them to find out. You're just there as a facilitator. So um, the guide will help them get started. So the resource that they have um, will give them ideas for getting started to allow them to meet all the criteria. Um, but then it's an open-ended project, so they can then do, um, take it in whichever direction they want to, um, depending on their interests. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take you through um, the process of doing a project using the Make a Fizzy Drink um, uh, example um, to illustrate that. Now the start, first stage um, in a project is um, the challenge or the problem they're solving, and this case is um, to make a fizzy drink. Uh, that leads into the next stage, which is research. Um, Students might start off just by looking um, at the ingredients on the back of their famous, favorite fizzy drinks bottle. Um, uh, they maybe could compare one or two together to see if there are differences. Um, and then they might look online and have a look for recipes for homemade fizzy drinks that they could recreate themselves. They might look into the health and um, implications of different ingredients in fizzy drinks um, uh, or different versions of fizzy drinks as well at the same time. So once they've got a few um, recipes together, then they need to start planning how they're going to do their project and how they're going to create their own fizzy drink. Um, this is a really important step for you as the, the parent or teacher who's facilitating the project to make sure that they really thought about the health and safety um, precautions that they might need to take. So um, your role will be to check through their plan um, and make sure that they are aware of any steps that they might need to um, take extra precautions. Um, there's lots of help on our website um, and signposting if you're not really sure um, or you're concerned about any of those. So once they've got their plan and they're happy with it and you're happy with it, um, next stage is the testing phase. Um, this, of course, when they get to make their own fizzy drink, which is great fun. Um, and they're not just going to make one, so they might try a number of different recipes out um, and compare the differences between them or they might adapt their, their first recipe and maybe increase or decrease the proportions of the ingredients um, to, to find out which is um, the, the um, effect that that's having. Um, and that leads into the next stage of discussion. Um, so they're going to analyze the differences and maybe think about the causes of those differences in their results um, and um, what the end result is like. Um, and once they've done that, hopefully, um, they will be confident to think about what their their final fizzy drink recipe will look like um, and um, recreate that. So that's taking you through the steps. So we start with the challenge, then the research, then the plan, then the testing and adapting of that recipe, um, and then finally a discussion. Now, while they're doing their project throughout their working, um, they want to capture the evidence um, for the work that they've done. So that, the easiest way to do that is through a photograph, um, uh, or you might want to use video, um, or they could, might prefer to use a diagram or, or notes that they take, um, whichever is their preferred method um, of recording what they've done and capturing um, evidence for it. Um, and once they have all that, um, it shouldn't be any extra work to, to, to pull that together. Um, they can then put that into um, a, a, maybe a PowerPoint um, to create a presentation um, to present to others. You might have other access to other technology that they might want to use. Um, PowerPoints are quite a familiar one for them to, um, that they might have used before. Um, I can then share their project, what they've done um, with other people. So we've seen some really incredible Crest submissions over the year for projects across all the Crest levels. Um, and it really lets young people get creative and use their skills and talents from across the curriculum to make the project their own. Uh, and, you know, as we're all spending a lot more time at home right now, having a long term project of 10 to 70 hours can, that can be spread across several days or even weeks uh, is a really fantastic way to keep young people engaged and learning at home, um, while also instilling really key skills, including problem solving and communication and if motivation is a problem and you have several children at home uh, you could encourage them to take on the project as a group or if you're a teacher you could encourage students from different households to video call each other to discuss projects and develop their skills together this will also help them learn uh, uh, discussion skills and work on their discussion section as they can bounce ideas around and get a sense of what others would take from their work 
there are actually lots of practical projects that work really well at home. Um, so for example, this one is around kitchen science and there's lots of other examples like that. Um, but students might be interested in projects around um, fabrics and materials, so used in clothing. Um, or they could look at waste and recycling in the home or energy use in the home. Um, if you have access to the outdoors, then um, they could use their garden or um, a, a visit a local park um, to look at biodiversity and ecology. So all these project topics work really well um, at home. So even in the current climate, when you're setting work for students to complete, um, they should be able to complete these with minimum um, equipment or resources. We've actually collected a lot of examples like these together um, from our resources library into a home learning pack. And you can find this in the home learning section of the resources library. Um, and this should give you lots of inspiration, or you and students, lots of inspiration um, for projects that they could complete at home. Home learning is a relatively new system for most of us, but there are still so many opportunities to develop skills outside of the classroom. We now have some time to answer your questions in the chat, but if you're interested in a more in-depth conversation, feel free to email us using the address on the screen now. Thanks so much for tuning into our webinar today.